Alright, so we're going to get started again. Um, so yeah, great first half. Uh, next up we have Squirrel with continuous web continuous deployment of web applications. I changed it anyway, so oh. don't worry about it. Definitely. Um, right, so most people call me by my surname, which is Squirrel. Um, there's a long story behind that, which you can ask me down in the pub sometime, but uh, it's mostly just because it's easy to remember. So um, if you want to know all about me, I'm a consultant and I help people fix broken development teams. So if uh, people in your team are pissed off and they, their product manager is fighting with you and you're, there's tons of bugs, I can help fix that. So you go up there and find out about that. But that's not what I'm going to talk about. I'm just going to talk about uh, uh, continuous integration and continuous deployment. And I'm ripping this off from a clever guy named Paul Julius, and I will put his uh, a link to his blog on uh, on the Meetup site, so you can look that up. And a really cool conference called KitCon, which is in Helsinki this year, and which everybody should go to because it's all about continuous integration and other cool stuff. Um, he drew a picture, which I'm going to draw up here with your help, and uh, so I'm mostly ripping it off from him, but uh, it'll be fun anyway. So uh, who's doing continuous integration? Cool. Who's doing continuous deployment? All right. What What do you mean by continuous deployment? Somebody tell me. Deploying code as soon as it's ready. Okay. Excellent. All right. Uh, with any human intervention, or is it as soon as you push it to go slide? As we merge it to Cliff Branch. Excellent. Okay. So uh, I probably don't have as much to tell you. So the folks who didn't raise their hands or who didn't have that definition of continuous deployment, I have more to tell you. And if I, if I don't annoy at least some of you during this talk, I've done it badly. So uh, I intend to say some heretical and uh, annoying things. Um, so uh, we usually start our software development, and I'm a very bad artist, by the way, so you'll just have to forgive me, um, with an idea. So this is my attempt at drawing a light bulb for an idea. So if somebody has an idea of something they want software to do, and down over here somewhere, someone is going to pay some money for that idea. So our goal is to get from the idea to some software for which someone's going to pay us some money, right? That's where we're trying to go. Um, so what do you do when you have an idea in your company? Somebody has an idea, what do they do with it so that we can all do stuff with it? What's the first thing? Pitch it. Pitch it, all right. So somebody has to des describe it and get it prioritized, all right. What else do they do with it? Brainstorm. Okay, I'm going to count that kind of under pitching. That's, that's fine, that's right. What, what else? Say again. Okay, yep, so let's assume that we've got through the whole kind of idea, it's, it's a good idea, we've agreed it's good. What, what do you do next? Okay, and let's assume that we have a team that's ready to work on it. Say again? Which starts with doing what? Planning by doing what? I think we're going in a circle. All right. Say again? Architecture. Okay, so we have uh, architecture. What other kinds of things do we do? Prototype. Okay, we might prototype. User acceptance. Ah, what, what's that mean? Check, checking your actual users and making sure that it works with them before you do it. Okay, so that might be with the prototyping. Okay, I'm, I'm open to that. I'm surprised no one said something that product managers usually do. Documentation? Uh, well, they <laughs> Time frame. Say again? Time frame. <laughs> All right. Okay, I'm just going to write it. Yeah. Does anybody here write specs? Does any, anybody do specs anymore? Yeah. <laughs> Nobody does any specs anymore. Yeah. All right, I agree. I agree. User, user stories. All right, yeah, user stories, excellent. Yeah, use cases. Use Story cases, boards, use all that stories. kind of stuff. Excellent. So we're not going to do any of those things. Okay, <laughs> fine. First heretical thing. Uh, how many people have users writing acceptance tests? Not directly. Yeah. How about product managers writing acceptance tests? You writing acceptance tests? Anybody doing that? How, how, if you were going to write acceptance tests, how would you do it? Anybody know? Anybody using acceptance tests as a, as a development model? Okay, so a common way to do it, which is good to know about, is with things like Cucumber, mm -hmm. Gherkin, let's see if I can name all the ones I can remember, Behat, anybody know other acceptance test frameworks? And what you do is you wind up writing. Does anybody know these? How many people know these kinds of things? Is there some familiar? Oh, only a few of you. Okay, so what you wind up doing is writing in a human language. It looks very human. You say things like, as a, um, I don't know, as a holiday maker, I want to find out what holidays are available so I can book a holiday, something like that. That was a really bad one, but you could think of better ones. And uh, you write that down and you actually make it executable. And um, so you can actually, if you go look up these things, I recommend looking up and finding out about how these things work. Um, you can actually write human writable, and therefore non-tech writable tests. And um, you can say, 
here's what's going to happen. I'm going to go to the Holiday Extras website. I'm making this up because I don't even know what Holiday Extras does. But um, I'm going to the Holiday <laughs> Extras website. I'm sure it has to do with holidays. I go to the Holiday Extras website. I want to go to, uh, I don't know, Belarus because I think it's exciting. And I put in what hotels are available in Belarus.